Welcome to this video where we're going to have a look at the four classes of planetary system that have been determined by astronomers quite recently. So this is for systems that have multiple planets in and they can be arranged in various different ways and the four classes are going to be ordered, anti-ordered, similar and mixed. And we're going to have a look at each one of those and why it's important to give them a class basically. Why, why do we need to know and why do we do this going forward? Well, one of the key things really actually going forward is the amount of planets we're discovering at the moment. So this is taken from the Exoplanet Archive, and it's the number of exoplanets discovered as a function of the year, really. So as time goes on, we're discovering more and more planets, and it is in the thousands now. So it's over 5,000 now. And the colour there denotes how they were detected. So was it passing in front of the star and blocking out light, which is transit, or was it some other method? So now that we've got lots and lots, we need to actually determine what the class of that system is. So as an example, we've got ones that are very close to their stars. So they're all very different. So on your left here is TRAPPIST-1. And this is a planetary system that is quite compact. It's a very small red dwarf. And it has quite a few planets that are similar in size really to Earth and in a, a similar sort of location in the sense of the habitable zone. So these are habitable planets fairly small, close to the star, so small planets close to the star, and on the other extreme you've got very large gas giants a long way from their star, so we've got a whole range of different types of planetary system here which is going to help us classify them really, give them a class. So the actual, the four ones you've got there, as we mentioned before, you've got ordered, anti-ordered, mixed and similar. Now they will fall into one of those classes depending on the composition, the size of the planet, so what's its internal density and structure like, and also where it's located in the system. You know, is it close to the star? Is it a long way off? Are they bunched up together? Are they all the way out? So it depends on their composition, their sizes, and also how they're arranged in the system itself. So the first one is ordered. And what that means is you've got the smaller planets closest to the star, and as you go further away from the star, they get bigger. So there's an increase in mass in the planets as you increase there. And then the opposite really of that is when you have anti-ordered. So that would be flipped around. You'd actually have your larger planets close to the star, and then you would get a decrease in mass as you got further away from the star. So that would be anti-ordered, which is the opposite way around to the ordered one. And then you have mixed. So in this sort of situation here, the planets are not ordered in mass. In fact, they are randomly distributed, not necessarily randomly, but they are mixed. So you've got big planets and small planets, then big planets, and there's no particular order there. So it's not ordered in mass necessarily. So it's kind of mixed. And then the final one is similar. So in this sort of system here, all of the planets would be somewhat comparable. So there wouldn't really be an increase in mass as you moved away from the star, they wouldn't decrease in mass and they wouldn't really be random. So they'd be fairly similar in size, composition, as you got from the star really. And to kind of give you an illustration of how that might look as a graph really, so the y-axis here is the size of the planet, for example like the mass, and on the bottom is the distance from the star, and the different systems there and how they might be arranged. Now you can see the green one there is mixed, so actually it's kind of a bit all over the place, and it's changing as you get from the star. Whereas the red one, which is ordered, you can see that's increasing away from the star, and then the anti-ordered is decreasing as it gets from the star, and then the similar one, you can see that going fairly flat. So this just gives you an illustration really as a graph as to how that mass would change as you got further away from the star. Now, another reason why do we want to classify these if we've got lots and lots of planets and these planetary systems? Well, the architecture of it can be quite important. For example, um, a similar system, so one like this here, where they're all relatively similar to one another, is thought to be probably one of the most common outcomes of planet formation. So when they form in a disk, we expect that this is the most common outcome of them forming in the disk around the young star. And then another aspect really, this is probably important when we want to look for maybe habitability sort of things, is anti-ordered, where you've got the bigger planets close in and the smaller ones further out, is these are quite rich in wet planets. These planets here 
or the planets in these systems have a higher percentage of water content or wet planets compared to other architecture types. So again, looking at these and classifying them into different classes can maybe help us decide which ones are going to be the best ones to look for life, which one are going to be the most habitable going forward as we find more and more of these systems. So thank you for watching and if you enjoy then you can check out some of the other videos.